Well, drones are the newest technology heroes. Drones are helping save lives in Nepal by aiding in search and rescue efforts following the devastating earthquake that has left more than 7,300 people dead and thousands are still unaccounted for. Indian and Nepalese authorities are now turning to technology as people start to lose hope. The governments are using drones and crowdsourced maps to get critical supplies out to stranded victims. George Guerra, Northrop Grumman Vice President of Unmanned Aircraft, joins me now in a Fox Biz exclusive. So we wanted to ask you about this. We, we know that the FAA and, of course, the developer of dro developers of drones are at odds. But isn't this something that can be used for good around the world, what we're seeing in Nepal? Hi, Cheryl. Hey, thanks for having me. Um, great question. Absolutely, they could be. Um, we've seen drones used, uh, our unmanned systems used for multiple applications. I mean, they're originally thought of being used for military, but we saw them being expanded into other areas. And uh, back in 2007, if people remember, there were, there were raging uh, fires burning across Southern California, including where my workplace was. We actually were, were closed because of the fires. Well, we saw unmanned uh, systems being used for that application. So as the fires were burning, um, our system, called the Global Hawk, was actually flying high above San Diego County at about 60,000 feet and, uh, and able to stay up there for up to 30 hours uh, taking images that we could feed real time to the firefighters on the ground. So the value of that was the, um, the images that they were being provided, they could use those to determine you know, where to send the relief teams, where to send the resources, where they needed to be uh, in order to understand what routes were safe for evacuations. So it was a real benefit that we saw really for the first time of our systems being used for a, that type of application. And um, the great part, um, Cheryl, was when it was, when it was all over, we, we heard from several firefighters that said, we really appreciated what you did because sure. you helped save lives and property. Well, that's the thing, you know, that, that, I, that struck me about what's happening in Nepal is that this is the government. This is the Indian and the Nepalese government saying that these drones are the way to f potentially find people that are still alive, maybe in mountainous areas that are stranded. Yeah. But here in the U.S., the FAA uh, is at odds with drone developers because they want the operator to have a line of sight to the drone. You're bringing up fires in California. Perfect example as we go into the summer fire season in California. You do think that the FAA could maybe at least, you know, drop that regulation in a, in a crisis? Um, um, is a company yeah. like your voice part of that discussion? Yeah, Cheryl, definitely. In fact, uh, that's a great, great uh, point you make is that in 2007, that's exactly how it happened. And I think in times of crises, uh, you, you're given permission to fly like a system like we had. And then um, I think, or well, I know right now, we're working very closely with the FAA and several unmanned systems organizations like AVSI and the UNITE uh, group. Basically, to do what you said, we're trying to make sure that we're influencing and helping to craft you know, responsible and safe policies and procedures that will allow technology you know, for, our, for unmanned systems, drones, to be used safely and to be able to help. Um, you know, besides what I mentioned, the fires, and we saw them used, you know, extensively in, in Japan uh, when the Japanese were faced with the tsunami and the uh, earthquake. Mm -hmm. That was an example where we saw the technology help save lives, find people, find where they could be moved safely, where relief needed to go. Uh, we saw it during hurricanes. We've seen it, as I mentioned, during the fires, the earthquakes. Just more and more applications that you're seeing where they can be used. Right. Well, let me ask you real quick about this National Geographic documentary uh, that I know that you're very proud of. It, and it includes, of course, the, the drone, the Global Hawk. And that is that, that NASA is using this to, to go up to very, very ex incredibly high elevations to take air samples. Um, and that helped the city of San Diego. So talk to me about the, the involvement between Northrop Grumman and the city of San Diego. And frankly, a, a, a wonderful award that's being offered to them, a high recognition. Oh. Yes, Cheryl, it was wonderful to be part of that documentary with National Geographic. It really kind of highlighted the advantages of San Diego with you know, technology, world-class universities, research facilities. And then it was, it was a real honor to be picked to be part of it. So we were able to highlight some of the technology we have at Northrop Grumman with the Global Hawk. And as you mentioned, we, we do take it and we fly up to high altitude and to regions like the Arctic. We've been to the Arctic to help map, map the ice flow and understand, you know, as we all know about global warming, what the impact is. Uh, we've taken it to the Pacific where we've flown over hurricanes and typhoons. Mm -hmm. uh, we've monitored the atmosphere and trying to understand it. If, if you live in California, we have this thing called the Pineapple Express that comes and hits us every winter. And now it's a 
better way to understand those storms and help predict and uh, how we might be able to help people. And uh, mm -hmm. so it's been it's been really nice to uh, see what the what Northrop Grumman here in San Diego has been right. able to do to help. George, I've got some breaking news I need to get to, but we do thank you for your time. Of course, we're going to follow uh, the program at Northrop Grumman. We are getting some more breaking.